In today's video, we're building a control panel, so stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is go into any rail and we're going to print off the track plan for the section that we want our panel to control, in this case, section two. Since we only want to print the contents of section two, we're going to hide sections one, three, and four. And we're also going to hide the buildings because we don't need to see that. So to print this, we are going to highlight the entire section. We're going to go to File, Print, we're going to select Landscape. Then it's very important to select Selection, so it only grabs what we wanted. Then we're going to adjust the size to what we want, and I'm going to do 22%, because I feel like this gets me pretty much two pages. You can see that it's set to three pages right here, but we are only going to print two of those pages. But before we do that, we are going to turn off all these settings down here, just so it doesn't leave any, uh, you know, information on the bottom. And then we are going to say print pages one, two, two, because we don't need page three. And then go ahead and print. With our paper printed off and cut to shape, we can go ahead and glue it to the backboard, which we're going to use 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. But before we do that, we are going to tape off the sections of the backboard that we don't want any glue on. For material, we are going to be using a double pull, double throw micro switch, a three millimeter LED light. This is low voltage, I think two or three volts, a plastic housing for the LED light to go in. And because we are running off a 12 volt feed, we need to have a resistor connected to that. Otherwise it's gonna blow up. So this is a 1K half watt resistor. I'm pretty sure you can get away with a quarter watt resistor. Uh, but that's just the one I have. Now, if you have a bigger panel or you just want bigger lights, this is a five millimeter light and of course, five millimeter housing. Now, originally I bought this pre-wired LED light, but this has 12 volts forward. So it was extremely bright, even when connected with a 4K resistor. Uh, so I didn't like them. So these ones right here, I feel are a much better brightness, much easier to look at and they're cheaper, so win-win. For wires, I'm using 22 gauge solid core wire, and if you have access to some Cat5 cable, this wire makes excellent jumpers. Once you have figured out the placement of your LED lights, you can mark them and go ahead and drill them. One thing that is nice about having this paper printed off from any rail, the holes for your switches are gonna be drilled right where these marks are, which is incredibly inconvenient. I'm using a one quarter inch drill bit for the micro switch and a 1364 drill bit for the LED light, which means LED light housing, which makes this extremely hard to get in. But once it's in, it doesn't move, which is ideal because I found a 732nd drill bit. While well, it makes this much, much easier to go in, I found the LED light and the housings pops out, which is really annoying while you're wiring it up. So I'm gonna try to do this with 13 64ths and spend a little extra time shoving those in because I don't want them to move. The best way I found to install these is with a pair of pliers.
These LED lights have a tall pin and a short pin. You want to make sure the two tall pins are as close as you can together because we are going to solder in a single resistor to those pins. This line represents the divide between the front fascia of my layout and my switch panel. So all my switches and wiring has to be on this side of the line. I decided to put my bus bars along the top here, as close to the line as I can get. I did not want to put them along the side here because I wanted to leave that spot open for some light switches or some expansion in the future. So along the top is really good. Now I didn't want to screw into the board because the screws will go right through and ruin the other side. Didn't want that. So I'm going to use some of this uh, 3M uh, double-sided tape. I just got some of these uh, in a GoPro accessory kit that I had laying around. Now I found for a really good bond, heat them up a little bit. The way I have my micro switches wired is I take 12 volt power into the top terminals of the micro switch and then jumpers that feed the opposite sides. And then from the positive side, I have a jumper that feeds the 1K resistor, which goes into the positive posts of the LED lights. Remember, the longer posts are your positive posts. The center terminals feed the micro switches with a jumper attached to the negative side of the LED lights. Now it does matter which side goes into which LED lights because for me, when I have my micro switch in the up position, I want that to illuminate the upper LED light. So in that case, I need to have a jumper feeding from the positive side going into that upper LED light. Twelve volt power comes from my distribution blocks. I put a twist in the wire just to keep it organized. A little flux paste and then tin all the terminals. I twist and solder the two positive poles of the LED lights together. Then I attach the 1K resistor. Solder jumpers to the negative poles of the LED lights. Then solder all the wires to the micro switch. I tested out the entire control panel and it tests out okay. I did have one micro switch that was bad, so I replaced it. And now I can go ahead and put connectors on the ends of these wires. And I'm doing that so I can remove this control panel if I need to in the future. 
For connectors, I'm going to be using these little uh, male quick connects. I have the females on the other end, 22 to 18 gauge with a 0 0.110 uh, tap. Now, if these connectors were exposed to the elements, I'd be more inclined to put some shrink tube on this, but since they're not, I don't really care that much. This was way too big for it anyways, but you get the idea. Now, another way to put the connectors on is you can tin the wire, like so. Crimp it like before, and then solder the connector to the wire. Now I should admit, I did make a mistake when running these wires that go to the switches. I ran them towards the bottom of the switch panel, and that is a mistake because the wires from the switches come from the top, which is up here. So I should have ran all of these wires towards the top instead of the bottom. I'm also going to number each one of the switches as well as the wire that comes from it. So if I ever do remove this panel or when I'm putting it all back together or whatever, it's gonna be easier to identify which wire goes where. Now I'll see if I can do this upside down. Ones are easy. Two, three, this one is number one. So I have all my feeder wires ran and connected. Now to connect it to the switch machine, I simply remove this little plug-in right here and then attach my wires. Now I've been running the white wire to the left side and the blue wire to the right side over here. And if I find that the switch machine is switching the wrong way on my turnout, I simply remove the wires and I reverse them. So our final setup is a power supply that feeds a toggle switch, that feeds an adapter, that goes to an inline fuse, and that goes to a terminal block, and that then feeds 12 volt power to our distribution blocks, and that goes to our main panel, and as you can see, our wiring is all done. And because this is a modular layout, I do have some disconnects right there. The purpose of the toggle switch is so I don't have to have power going to my switch machines all the time. So we'll flip this and that turns on our system. So the way this works is the lights signify the direction of the train. So if I want to take my train down this siding right here, I flip the switch down and now our train can go down that siding. Same here. If I want to go say up through here and over, well, we're going to flip that. We'll flip that, and we'll flip that, and now you can see our direction of the train. It's as simple as that. Well, let's give it a quick test.
If you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.